Hi, I'm Ruth Kaiser, the smiley lady from SpontaneousSmiley.com, here to talk to you today about the science behind smiling. It's silly science from the Spontaneous Smiley Project. Spontaneous Smiley, the smiliest website ever created, where thousands of people from all over the world find smiley faces in everyday objects. Today I get to pretend I'm a scientist, lab coat and all. Who's ready for some cognitive priming? That's where an idea gets planted in your brain, like when someone mentions a song and you're singing it for days, or someone tells you about a new fad and suddenly you see it everywhere you go. The cognitive prime that I have for you is to tell you that there are smiley faces in everyday objects just waiting to be found. We call these spontaneous smileys. And now that you've been cognitively primed, when you see this, you'll think, oh, what an adorable little smiley face, instead of thinking, why in the world would anyone take a picture of a muffin? And instead of being irritated that someone left their dirty laundry on the floor, you'll think, man, I am loving that khaki smiley. Spontaneous smileys are everywhere. And stumbling across a spontaneous smiley face brings moments of joy to your life. Become smiley obsessed and your morning toast smiles back. The rock in your garden is happy to see you. You park your car and it looks up as if to say, oh, I'll just wait here. You go have fun. Life is pretty great when your birthday cake smiles back. And who can resist grinning when your fruit is grinning at you? And best of all, an unpleasant chore like taking out the garbage or changing a diaper will forevermore come with a smiley reminder to be happy even so. So why do we see faces in objects? I'm certainly not the only one. After all, on eBay, someone paid $28,000 for the Virgin Mary on a grilled cheese sandwich. And even though I'm just a preschool teacher with a goofy little hobby, my website's gotten over 17 million clicks. Spontaneous Smiley is such a contagious movement that I've even had the thrill of giving a TED Talk. And I still can hardly believe that I got to have lunch with one of my very favorite people. Does all of this remind you of Disneyland where every day millions of people search for hidden Mickeys? Maybe I should have put moldy Mickey Mouse pumpkin on eBay instead of on my compost heap. The science behind all of this silliness is called pareidolia, where one takes vague or random stimulus and perceives it as significant. Faces in clouds, the man in the moon, constellations, or hearing hidden messages or unintended lyrics when listening to music. Jimi Hendrix did not say, excuse me while I kiss this guy. It was, excuse me while I kiss this guy. And Elton John did not say, hold me closer, Tony Danza. It was, hold me closer, Tiny Dancer. And my personal favorite from my buddy Jared, the instinct to search for human faces is so strong it is actually hard to suppress. But who would want to? After all, connecting with other humans is what life is all about. Oh yeah, and finding spontaneous smileys in everyday objects? That's totally fun. Facial recognition is hardwired into our brains. The ability evolved as a survival mechanism. Go back millions of years, and the babies that recognized and responded to human faces won the hearts of their caregivers and thus were more likely to be fed and to prosper. What was once associative learning, a baby learning to associate that honing in on a face often meant that they'd get fed, became over time instinct. You don't have to be taught, you don't have to learn it. Babies pop out on day one seeking and locking in on faces. The survival tool is so strong that show a baby an image that merely resembles a face and you get a wiggly, giggly response. Well, <laughs> everyone smiles at that last one. Over time, they respond less to this and more to these. So what's happening in the brains of adults looking back at those smiling babies? The pleasure-related, dopamine-associated, reward-processing regions of the premotor cortex of their brains are activated. The initial hypothesis was that it was a response learned through the experience of parenting. But MRI studies show that all adults, young or old, male or female, parents or not, have a similar brain response, making caring for babies inherently pleasurable. This is another indicator that facial interest and recognition are survival mechanisms. So, does that mean that smiling is universal? Well, yes and no. Smiling as an emotional response to pleasure is universal. But how we use smiles and how we interpret smiles is very culturally based. But every human is born knowing how to smile. Even blind babies smile spontaneously in just the same way as seeing children while never having seen a smile. And what about the science of smiling as it relates to health and happiness? What do you think? Do happier people live longer? It turns out, yes, that smiley people do live longer. One study looked at old baseball cards, sorting them into smilers and non-smilers, and then tracked down the statistics for age at the time of death. 
No big surprise, the broad smilers had lived longer, about seven years longer than the ones who hadn't smiled for their pictures. A similar study looked at old high school yearbooks and then tracked down those now senior citizens. They found that the broad smilers had had happier, healthier, and more successful lives, longer marriages, deeper friendships, greater work satisfaction, and they scored higher on standardized tests of happiness and well-being. Amazingly, you can actually increase your feelings of well-being by smiling even when you're feeling blue. Smiling lifts your mood because your brain gets feedback from your face. I'll say that again because it's so important. Your brain gets feedback from your face. Darwin said even the simulation of an emotion tends to arouse that emotion. I didn't have any luck finding a picture of Darwin smiling. Now here we've got a smiler. Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh said sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. Scientists have found that facial feedback actually modifies our neural processing. Our brain circuitry for emotions and happiness is triggered when we smile, even if it's a fake or a forced smile. One way that we know that our brains get feedback from our face comes from my totally, totally favorite science experiment. You can do this experiment at home, but only if you invest in this highly precise yet amazingly affordable piece of scientific equipment, the pencil. It turns out one of the main ways we interpret other people's intentions is by mimicking their facial expressions. Give a subject pictures of people smiling, sincere, snarky, flirty, nervous smiles, and most people can quickly tell you the intent behind the faces in the photos. That is unless, pencil please, you make them hold a pencil in their mouth. If the subject is biting down on a pencil and is thus unable to mimic the facial expressions in the photos, they have a very, very hard time knowing what those expressions mean. Pencil out, and they will automatically imitate and instantly understand the intent. Their brain is getting feedback from their own face. When people say that smiling is contagious, that's not just a saying. We form a mimicking smile in about 300 milliseconds after seeing a smile. Smiling back is almost impossible to suppress. If nothing else that I've said today sticks, I hope that you walk away with this. Pause in the present to enjoy the present. Spontaneous Smiley is all about stopping to smell the roses. I'll make that stopping to see the smiley faces. Remember, 50% of your happiness comes from your genes, 10% from your situation, and that leaves a whopping 40% left for attitude and outlook. And that, my friends, is up to you. It's something you control, but only if you choose to. And if smiling doesn't come easily to you, you might want to get yourselves one of these, a refrigerator that is unlocked by your smile. Studies done by the developers found that for the first few days, the smiles that were caught by the fridge's camera were forced. But by day 10, most people opening the door were smiling naturally. You gotta know, I am super proud that Spontaneous Smiley is helping people live smilier, happier lives, even without buying a high-tech refrigerator. After all, choosing to be happy is what Spontaneous Smiley is all about. I'm equally proud that the Spontaneous Smiley community has joined me in raising funds for the children of Operation Smile. In 2009, SpontaneousSmiley.com partnered with Operation Smile, which gives free surgeries to kids with facial deformities, cleft lips, cleft palates. You upload a smiley to our website and we donate a dollar. So far, we've paid for 25 kids to get life-changing surgery. And in March, I'll be on an airplane to Paraguay as a volunteer on a medical mission. If you'd like to help, just go to SpontaneousSmiley.com and click on the Operation Smile tab. Spontaneous Smiley and Operation Smile would be very thankful. Oh yeah, and one last thing. My editor would want me to get my brain examined if I didn't remember to say I'm a children's author. I have a children's book of optimism called The Smiley Book of Colors. I'd love to share it with you. I truly believe we should not just hope that our kids turn out to be happy, well-adjusted adults. I think that we need to talk to them and to teach them about happiness. Smile!
been from 